welcome back to Britmas 20. He's gonna finish it for me. 2020. Happy Britmas, everybody. So you guys know what time it is. It is time for the advent calendar. Krampus is so freaking excited right now. Oh my god. I can't even open it like always. Ugh, it's just a ball. <laughs> a white ball this time. I know, I know. I miss the big chocolate bars too. So what inspired this video was Zach Bagans, of course. He recently purchased the clown doll from the Poltergeist movie. And I was just like, oh my god, what a, what a king. What kills me about this is the fact that he wants this clown doll to sleep in his room as he's sleeping and facing him just like the clown doll did in the movie when he was facing Robbie on the chair. But you know what? I I would do the same thing. We have the same mentality that way. <laughs> because you know, when I was babysitting the Annabelle doll from Annabelle Comes Home, the real one, Warner Brothers gave it to me for 48 hours. Definitely check out that video if you haven't yet. It was quite the experience. Annabelle slept in my room with me. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, yeah. Even though, I don't know, I just wanted to see if anything was surrounding this doll since it's from the movie and there's a lot of curses that go on. There's so many rumors of curses that go on on horror film sets. So in the original Poltergeist, I actually, I've only seen the first one. I've never seen the second one or the third one, but there are three in total. But the original came out in June of 1982. And ever since, like throughout the span of these three Poltergeist films, there's been numerous deaths among the cast. So that kind of brought out this curse. So after the first Poltergeist movie came out in 1982, June of 1982, a few months later, November of 1982, the eldest daughter in the movie, Dana, who was played by Dominique Dunn, she was strangled by her boyfriend. And this happened on her driveway. She was 21 or 22 years old, and her boyfriend just left her for dead. I think he was trying to win her back, and she said no, and and then he just snapped at her and then she was taken to the hospital and five days later she was taken off of life support. One of the theories about how this curse started was of course in the first movie that famous scene one of the most famous scenes and one of the most terrifying scenes is when the mother Diane falls into the swimming pool in the backyard and it's filled with skeletons. Now what she didn't know at the time when she was filming it, she thought that, and the cast thought, that these skeletons in the pool were props. They were fake. But no, they were actually real skeletons that she was filming with. So maybe, and this is what a lot of people believe, is each of these skeletons, the spirit that these skeletons belong to, or the spirits, they didn't like what was going on. They didn't like how their bones were being used in this horror film. And maybe that is the beginning. That is um, a big and strong theory within this film. So now, when they were filming the sequel of Poltergeist, one of the actors in the sequel, William Sampson, he performed an exorcism on the set because he knew about the real skeletons from the first film. And this was two years later, so in 1984. So the night before, he went to the set by himself late at night, performed this exorcism, and apparently the next day, everybody on set felt great. They felt relieved. After Julian Beck, who starred as Kane in Poltergeist 2, The Other Side, he died of stomach cancer at age 60. And he was diagnosed before he accepted the role, and he then passed away in September of 1985, just months before the film even came out in theaters. Now, remember William Sampson, the one who performed the exorcism the night before filming? He died of kidney failure at age 53. Now, the death that made everyone just think, okay, there's got to be some curse involved in this movie, was the death of the star, Carol Ann, the little girl. They're here. The face of Poltergeist 
She is the star, the little blonde girl, Heather O'Rourke. Heather died of cardiac arrest and septic shock caused by a misdiagnosed intestinal issue. And she died in February 1988 at the very young age of 12, just several months before the release of Poltergeist 3, the final chapter. The next death is like something out of Final Destination. Actor Richard Lawson. He almost died in a plane crash. He was in this plane crash, but he survived, thankfully. And this happened in March of 1992. A total of 27 people out of the 51 who were on board were killed. Now Richard Lawson, he's had many other close death encounters. On his 21st birthday, he barely avoided a bullet. Just barely. And a few years after that, he was so close to being hit by a car on the street. He was also in a very severe car crash and his body was bent in half. And if it wasn't for his window being rolled down, he would have most likely died. He also almost killed himself with a drug overdose. And 1992 is when the plane crash happened. So it's just like, it's insane. And I was watching an interview with him and he's just like the curse. He was talking about it. And it, I, I just, I'm just amazed by this man, like really amazed. And when Richard Lawson got on that plane, he was upgraded from his original seat to first class. The person that was in his original seat, the seat that Richard Lawson was supposed to be sitting at, that person passed away. So it's just his near death experiences are just so freaking close and they've happened over and over and over again. Now in 2009, a cast member was brutally murdered in his home with an axe. Actor Lou Perryman, who played the small role of Pugsley in the original Poltergeist film, he was 67 years old when a recently released ex-convict killed him in his own home with an axe. Now getting into the crazy evil clown doll from the movie who belonged to Robbie who played the brother and he was played by actor Oliver Robbins. Now throughout the years there's been a lot of conspiracies and rumors that he actually died in a fatal car crash or that he died when he was on set from the evil clown but that is not true. Now you know the terrifying scene when Robbie gets attacked by evil clown that's sitting at the edge of his bed on that chair when he gets attacked, he almost died on set when filming that scene. There was a severe malfunction with the clown and it nearly choked Oliver to death. Everyone on set just thought he was doing a great performance and it wasn't until he began turning blue that they realized something was seriously wrong. So can you imagine if they think, you know, he's doing a great job and they just kept letting him go with it, thinking that he's just doing an outstanding performance, he could have been strangled to death by that clown. So now, Zach Bagans, who's the one who inspired me to make this video, of course, because that man inspires me all the time, like you guys know, I met Zach Bagans, I went to the museum, definitely check out that video, I'm wearing his Demon House shirt right now, that man is my freaking idol, he's amazing. Nothing but good vibes with him, nothing but amazing things to say about him. But he has this clown now, and he wants it to sleep in his room with him, just like how Robbie had the clown. So, this clown was on the set of a very cursed movie, the original movie. Do you guys believe this is cursed? I, it has to be. I'm sorry. All of these deaths, and they're all so tragic, there has to be something going on. The main star passing away at the very young age of 12. She died on the operating table, by the way. Like, it's just, every someone was strangled, stomach cancer, Richard Lawson, all of these near-death experiences, like, he just missed death by a little bit. And so many times throughout his life. Like, it's so creepy. Do you believe that this set was cursed? Do you believe the curse began with the skeletons in the pool? I really believe that. I think that makes perfect sense because just the way that they were used, like they were props, but they weren't props. And I don't think the spirits of the skeletons, 
appreciated that. So Zach is first going to have this clown doll in his bedroom and then it's going to eventually move to the museum. But you know what? I don't blame him. Like I would be doing the same thing. I would have that doll in my bedroom as well just to kind of see what's going on and investigate it. You know what I mean? If it has something to do with the curse. Especially since the actor Oliver who played Robbie almost died in a malfunction with the clown. Like was it really a malfunction? You know what I mean? That's so creepy. Now Zach spent $80,000 on this clown and apparently it was already in Vegas at the time at Planet Hollywood. So Zach has it now. It's his. And it's crazy. Low key jealous to be honest. But yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. Do you think that this film franchise is indeed cursed. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, turn on your bell so you'll be notified every single time that I upload. Give it a like and comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy breakfast everybody!